Hail and welcome everyone to another Random Heathen Ramblings podcast episode of Midgard Musings Production. My name is Jesse. Hail and welcome back. Let's get into it. Hope you're all doing fine and well as we uh, start to prepare for the end of 2021 and welcome in 2022. Almost finishing up here. We got one episode left before we finish up season two of the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast. And you all have been here with me this whole entire time. And I greatly, um, I do, I greatly appreciate um, everyone's involvement, everyone's inclusion, everyone's participation, everyone's views, likes, comments, uh, shares, um, streams, you know, wherever it is that you are in Midgard. Thank you so much. This is uh, another truck track <laughs> from Donheim. Uh, it's from the 2017 album uh, Mana Vegar. You can find it on YouTube. Stream and listen to it for free. Um, but definitely consider supporting artists um, on whatever platform it is that you stream and listen to your music on. So, um, very special, very fun, very cool episode here uh, that we got lined up today. We are going to be having on the youngest guest to date um, and a longtime supporter of Midgard Musings. Um, going to be talking about a few things before we welcome him in. So, Without further ado, let's uh, break through the noise and get this show started. All right, so... Um, yeah, we uh, got some things to just knock out of the way real quick. As always, if uh, this is your first time tuning in or finding the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast, thank you so much. Uh, like I said, my name is Jesse, and I uh, do these on a weekly basis. These have sort of become a uh, the, the, the weekly cadence of my YouTube channel, Midgard Musings, uh, has largely been uh, the podcast thing just because of my... Um, times and you know availability and and all that kind of stuff um there will be uh coming out here soon a sort of state of the channel address that i'll be uh publishing on the youtube channel so if you want to know about uh the future of midgard musings the the production side of things if you want to find out more about that then i encourage you to subscribe to midgard musings on youtube i will probably talk a bit more about it um at the beginning of season three of this podcast, uh, which will be at the beginning of 2021, or sorry, 2022, I'm not traveling back in time. I am moving forward. We are moving forward together, pressing forward, pressing on um, into new things. So there will be a state of the channel address coming up um, on YouTube uh, here in the coming probably week or so. Yeah, well, you know, before the before the end of the year, for sure. Um, just to kind of let all of the uh, folks know what to expect in the coming year. I know a lot of folks that um, <clears throat> support the channel monetarily through their uh, channel memberships have been wondering what in the heck is going on. Because a lot of the membership perks that, um, you know, I, uh, I have listed there are things that I haven't done in months. And there's a good reason for that. And we're going to get into that with uh, the state of the channel address. So um, we're going to be adjusting some things on the channel to better fit um, what I'm capable of doing. Uh, that's not going to impact my personal life 
too greatly, but also to give back to those who uh, give so much to me and help me keep being able to do these sorts of things and, and do what I do. Uh, so we're all here to learn together. Uh, this is a fun, educational, very laid back sort of thing, like I said, for all those that are new uh, to this. So if you are new and you want to know more about what this is, it's a Norse slash Germanic pagan uh, channel or, or, or podcast. And we talk about all kinds of things. So one of the things that I really um, love about this, this uh, where this podcast has, has kind of turned uh, over this uh, probably last year or so is that it has turned into a very inclusive thing. I've had some really cool guests, uh, a lot of great friends, um, met new friends and learned a lot of new things uh, in this past year that I've been able to talk about and share with all of you, you know, and uh, I hope that the uh, the laid back entertainment part of things is, has made it enjoyable for you. So if you want to, you know, um, give me some feedback on that, you can uh, do it in a number of ways. You can send an email to MidgardMusingsTN at gmail.com. You can call into the Midgard Musings hotline. That is a uh, domestic U.S. number, and it is 615-671-9832, standard rate supply from wherever it is that you're calling. But leave a voicemail and would love to feature your voice on a future Random Heathen Ramblings uh, podcast. If you would like to know more about everything else that I do, you can follow me on my social media platforms, which includes Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and of course, YouTube. Um, I do have a Patreon page. It's, again, going to be something that I talk a bit about more in depth for uh, or during the state of the channel address and but in the show notes of this episode as in all episodes are down in the description of this video or if you're watching this on the YouTube premiere you'll find a link tree link and if you click on that link tree link it will take you to all of my sites um, or I'll take you to one place that you can visit all of my sites so check them all out down there and if you like follow comment whatever the other one is, like, follow, oh, subscribe, <laughs> upvote the episodes, favorite them, whatever. Um, just whatever way that you can give back uh, by just, you know, engaging with the social media algorithms and such that way, it's great. There's also merchandise um, for those that want to, um, you know, provide some monetary support. So that's one thing that I wanted to mention. The other thing is that um, the intro music, that you hear at the beginning of every episode, not the Donheim stuff, um, but the other intro uh, music. <clears throat> um, we are in the works of um, producing a new Midgard Musings theme song, theme music, whatever. It's a, it's, it's a track that's being written um, by a very good friend of mine. And um, he's been on, actually on this podcast before, Josh Kroom. Is, is writing a piece uh, that is dedicated to Midgard Musings. I'm very excited. I've been hearing some really great things of the, of, as far as the, uh, the musical arrangements and stuff. Um, and I've been involved in the feedback that he's asking for in terms of, do you like this? Do you want this? Take this out, add this, la, 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 la. And uh, we're going to be doing something really special with it. Um, can't really say a time frame on it yet because, again, it's still in the, in the very uh, infant stages of things. So we're still, you know, waiting to, uh, you know, proof the final draft and then get it sent off to uh, the producer for its final mastering. And then when we get it, you'll hear about it here first. Um, and you'll get a special thing to kind of go with it to enjoy it and, and, and check it all out. So very excited for that. That'll be most likely coming around again in the early parts of 2022. Just again, depending on um, how long it's going to take for all of the production stuff to to final to be finalized. But Josh is really excited about it. He's been working on it tirelessly. It seems like he's always sending me messages here lately. Hey, dude, working on this. Want your feedback on that? Shooting emails back and forth, Facebook messages, the whole nine yards. Um, and I'm excited. As a matter of fact, um, at the at the time of this podcast being recorded, which is a couple of weeks of well, about a week or so, week and a half away from when it airs, um, I am awaiting another draft. So by the time this episode airs, you guys uh, will be hearing about it later on, and I'll have already probably heard 
close to what may be the final draft. So stay tuned for that coming up in 2022. Um, but without further ado, I think I've rambled on enough about my own stuff and, and things pertaining to what uh, the podcast is going to be doing, the YouTube channel, uh, and how that's going to impact your uh, viewing and listening experience coming into the new year and into the new season, season three. Um, so let's go ahead and welcome in um, my guest. His name is Wyatt Coverdale. He has a YouTube channel as well. He has actually been featured on a number of Midgard Musings YouTube live streams. He's always engaging in the comment section, um, especially during live streams. And he's been on, again, a couple of uh, live streams where he's like talking and stuff like that. He's got some really interesting perspectives and perceptions on things. And so let's see what we get into today. He does have some heathen views. I say heathen views, but he's very young and he's very, uh, um, he's learning a lot. He's, he's absorbing a lot in his, in his um, alternative approach or his alternative perception to just the world around him is, is pretty in interesting and intriguing. And uh, I know not just me, but some other folks that um, I'm going to hopefully have on the podcast with him tonight, we'll see, is, uh, is, is it's always a real fun time hearing his thoughts talking about stuff so let's see what we can get into today with Wyatt Coverdale here on the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast let's welcome him in all right folks well here we are back at the uh second to last I guess this will be now uh episode of Random Heathen Ramblings of season two and uh as I mentioned in the intro I've got with me joined today Wyatt Coverdale, and also uh, you've you've seen him here before many times. We've got Dingo here on the podcast as well. So, uh, hail and welcome to the show, Wyatt and Dingo. Hello, hello, everybody. I'm Wyatt Coverdale. Yeah, yeah, you are. Um... <laughs> it's an honor to have me back on. I didn't expect <laughs> to be a running thing like this. Well. You, you'll learn to expect the unexpected around these parts, my man, because uh, I, uh, I, was, I, was, I was telling everybody like in the intro just a little bit about you with, with what information I had at the time. And uh, I feel like it would be a really neat thing to um, just go a little bit into like just who you are. You don't have to go into too many great details, but I, I was telling everybody like, you know, Wyatt here is the youngest guest, first of all, the youngest guest that I've had on this podcast. But you, you're, you're no stranger to Midgard Musings, and you're no stranger to, um, you know, what I do here. And you've been a very um, active participant um, over the last, what, like a year, year or two? You can't be active and a philosopher at the same time. Those two don't coincide. <laughs> uh, see, he's, he's getting, he's, he just jumped into the deep end. <laughs> he's just like, oh, yeah, by the way, no life jacket. <laughs> No, 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 no life preserver, no nothing. Let's just jump into the deep end. Okay, so it's going to be one of these deals. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, by the way, um, wait, I had a thought there. Where was I going with it? Right. <laughs> Sorry that I kept, uh, um, as you put it, vamping out in the live stream. <laughs> I, I do that sometimes because I want you guys to figure it out yourselves. Sometimes I just leave intentionally and try, try giving you materials and let chaos and do I love it. I love it, especially when it's such a uh, an impromptu sort of thing, like those live streams where you were just like, "Hey, I'm here," and you go off on this thing, uh, to the thing that we were talking about, and um, and then you're like, "Shoot, I gotta go, bye," and then we're all just sitting there, kind of like with our fingers up our noses, like, "What? What the heck was that?" Like Dingo was there, I think, for one of them. I think Alex from Red uh, Rabbit Hole was on that whole. It was like a real impromptu yeah. thing, like, "Oh, let's just bring a bunch of people in," like. And then next thing you know, we were all like left with this just, you know, big thing to digest. And then, but that's why it guys, um, he's got a YouTube channel. Um, <laughs> his information is going to be uh, annotated in the show notes of the, of the podcast, as well as in the description of the video. So however you're absorbing this podcast, um, check the respective areas for his channel to see just what he talks about um which is what why what do you what do you what do you use your platform for how do you what do you what do you do um philosophy cult magic uh, a couple of forms of art like poetry i think i have one song on there uh, i probably I won't be gonna doing say anything. your music yeah 
Yeah, but I probably won't be doing any of that anymore because my, my parents think I'm going to get copyright for the, uh, the thing that I used. <laughs> um, so several forms of art, science, magic, philosophy, literature, since I do poetry a lot and book writing, those yeah. sort of things. Yeah. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, I'm, I used to be a record label owner and uh, a musician for a little while. And if you want to talk about copyright laws and, you know, I can have a conversation with your parents on how those things work because I've been there. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's navigated those waters, I'd say. Yeah. Pretty. I, don't, I don't think it'd be a really good idea to introduce you guys to my parents any further than that. <laughs> We don't bite, we promise, you know. Any further, and they'll be like, keep my son away. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing against you guys. It's just, uh, you know. I get it, man. I get it. You're in a you're yeah. in a unique, you know, we're all in a unique position with this. And, and I just want to say I think it's really cool that um that we were able to coordinate this, you know, because um of that whole dynamic, you know what I'm saying? So it's it's really cool that we got this opportunity to just sit together and as friends and just ramble on about random things. And one of the cool things that I thought I would want I wanted to mention was um, <clears throat> one of the first like moments that um, Midgard Musings got a video posted about them, at least that I'm aware of. There there could be stuff out here in the internet that I'm not aware of, but like one of the first uh, videos that somebody else posted that like made a a, a conscious effort to kind of like call out my channel or, or shout out my channel or whatever was yours, Wyatt. You did this thing and it, it, it was like, it was a live stream I think that I had been doing and I gave you a shout out or I said hi. And that like, for you at that time, you were like, <laughs> oh my gosh, you know, like he did it and he's so, this is so cool. And I was like, man, that, that that's kind of where I think this whole relationship as it were started. That right? was, um, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm not very as fanboyish as I was before, but at, at the time I felt inspired from that because, I mean, you were my teacher basically ever since your channel started or around that. I've known you for quite a while, but you don't know me. <laughs> the, uh, yeah, like, and that, that's like where, where it all started. You say, you know, um, mm -hmm. fanboy or, or whatever. I mean, like, we're, like you see here, real people, real people, nothing fake, just <laughs> authentic and real. And that's with anybody that I deal with, you know, I mean, it's, I just, I'm just a guy with a YouTube channel too. And I'm just a heathen with a YouTube channel. And I just, I use that platform to talk about heathen related things. And and you've been engaged with it. I think you've also got some items that uh, made it, made it, made it your way that were either crafted by people I know or, or by myself uh, with uh, that, that kind of tie into the whole heathen, the Norse heathen, or Germanic pagan um, <laughs> side of things, but you have a very um, broader approach to existence, I guess, to life or whatever. I don't know. I don't want to put words into yeah. your mouth, but it, it doesn't, it's not tied to one specific thing. So. And hmm. the words of D.H. Thorne, who is another pal of mine on YouTube, even if I were to forget everything that I had ever learned about magic. So long as I could keep the knowledge and the philosophy that I had learned, I'd be totally fine with it. Because that's the most important part to me. It's an understanding of the universe rather than a manipulation of it. Mm. Well, manipulation. That's not like one. Dingo. Um, <laughs> that reminds me of uh, someone. Um, not a whole lot of people know this about me, but. Um, I was a trained martial artist when I was younger and there was a, a guy that was in the same dojo as me. <clears throat> I never practiced with him, but he became paralyzed and he said that he felt like he could practice martial arts, not being able to move. Mm -hmm. And that always stuck with me. Because that's the core of it. Um, yeah, I to, remember. Um, I questionably argue. Um, I don't really want to use that word because I'm not trying to argue. But the purpose of ma that is the purpose of magic. So I wouldn't associate it with that word. Is it the purpose or is it how it works? Magic is not the manipulation. 
Magic is the understanding. Yes, okay. Here's where the big brain starts to leak in. <laughs> um, if, oh, you, oh. you can argue about semantics all day, but that's how I view magic because that is the sole purpose. Okay, well, I'm going to uh, get into that in a minute. But uh, before I forget, um, I remember Alex said something on the live stream. He said, uh, um, you remember when I mentioned Azathoth, the dreamer from Lovecrafting War? Yeah. That, um, he said, is that the Lesser Key of Solomon? No, you, he was thinking of Astaroth. I meant Azathoth. Right. Yeah. I, I corrected him on that in a uh, text message, as I recall, later that night. <laughs> right. You guys say anything about me? Do, do you? Come on. Man, we talk all kinds of crap about you. What do you mean? No, we don't. No. <laughs> no, all of the stuff that we have to yeah, say. Young man, man, you have had many things said about you, and none of them are bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah, 100%. I mean, it's, it's, it's all good. It's all good from this side. Um, and if it weren't, or you know what? It's not even that it's good or bad. It's just like, well, it is good. I mean, I'll, I'll say that much, but anything that's like, I don't want to be like talking bad about people. If, if there's something that's worth talking to someone about that's constructive and could help them, then you talk to them about it. You don't, you don't talk about them. You talk to them and talk with them about it. Right. Hey, you know, think about this, but dude, I'm just going to say like you, the, your, your insights, your thoughts, your, your conversations, even if it's just in a chat group uh, or, you know, during a live stream or a comment on a video it's 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 invoking it's 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 thought inspiring and it, and it has put me in positions to think about things and i hope it does the same way for others you know and, and that's just coming from the heart um from my heart that begs the per, the question of perception you know like your perception is different your perception of yourself is different than my perception of you what mm -hmm. is and you. every way around, you know. That means a lot coming from you too. I mean, as well, Dingo slightly new, but <laughs> uh, you two now you two are my biggest inspirations so far. I think I mean, the more you hang around us, man, in this atmosphere, in this setting, right? And I, when I say hang around, I mean we're 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 distance separates us, mileage separates us. But the connection that we're able to have through the, the, the conveniences of modern technology allow us to touch a little bit on the essences of oneself, right? Because we talk, and what is talking? Talking is weaving words. When we, when we speak, when we, when we talk, when we write, we are, we are spelling. We are, we are writing out words. We are saying words. We are speaking words. We are spelling. We are casting spells. Are you certain so, you aren't reading from a script? There is no, no script in front of me. I can 100% confirm. I feel like I just got read a thesaurus. <laughs> well, I mean, like that, uh, we're all peers here, you know? And that's the gnarly thing, dude. In, like, in that's this the gnarly current thing. situation, we're all peers here. We meet at a round table, a virtual round table. Yeah. You know, and the years between our lives right? Whether it's a generational gap or anything like that means little to nothing right now because we are meeting on a common ground. We are talking about things that we can at least on the, uh, to some degree each relate to, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, that's like where, where it started with you being really kind of like blown away that I said your name on a live stream or whatever. And I'm like, wow, this kid's, you know, interested in what i do and it, it didn't stop there it, it the it was like a seed that got planted you know and there was nurturing and there was um tending to i guess you could say in a way very loosely um yeah. to to, to keep the, the 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 thing growing and it's grown into what it is now and i hope to see more growth come from it and i think that there's a lot of opportunity there there's no reason for me to think that it shouldn't or couldn't continue to grow right. you know yeah man me too um, I'm, I'm not sure, why did I delete that video? I think I deleted it um, accidentally because I was going through, you know, one of my channel cycles <laughs> improving. Yeah. So I might have accidentally deleted that. <clears throat> well, if it's there, it's there. If it's not, uh, you know, we know, we, we all know, we know what it, ha we know what happened. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Our little secret. <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, but I like the uh, I like the thing about um, the uh, the manipulation versus the understanding. You know, let's talk about that. Let's get into that a little bit. I think Wyatt, you had some things you wanted sure. to jump into with that. You know, talking about big brain stuff. <laughs> I assume that would be the topic of the video <laughs> was the functions of magic and things like that. Which you did one recently on, right? Hmm? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, I, I haven't made anything on the functions of magic itself yet. I think that had to do something with time, whatever you saw. Okay. Uh, you touched on it. Yeah, it was like a, a, a footnote in the larger spectrum, yeah. I think. But Well, I'm not going to explain the entirety of quantum physics in a single 11-minute video. <laughs> <laughs> You, you think <laughs> that, that that's right a, that's, that's a that's Nor a reach can you. <laughs> <laughs> if you could man i'll be like you know what he's the host of the podcast now guys right yeah the heck with me I, I got i got nothing on this guy he's 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 it you know but <laughs> i feel honored <laughs> so first to answer the question of how magic works does it exist how does it function does it have meaning etc first i'd have to ask how do you two believe magic work? I need to see your perspectives first. Uh, Dingo, you want to start that one off? <laughs> Define it. Define the word that of magic that you would, you know, define what you associate that with. Because well, the, when it comes to that, it's that mean that word means a very different thing to a, many people. Well, I mean, you, you you understand the blanket term, don't you? Like magic with a K, if you want to say. That sounds more Wiccan. The, the spiritual magic, the, the idea of um, manipulating and or understanding the universe through somehow connecting with it. It's both, you know, but it's a two-sided. Dual. Okay, it's both, but it's a two-sided coin. It's really a three-sided thing because you have you have the, the the pure knowledge in the middle that just irrelevant in a way, but not, and also uh, there there's no bias, right? And then you have the practice of it, which is a very physical thing, and then you have the result of it, which is a very mental thing. Well, I'm referring to all of that as a blanket term, just, you know, the general. Right. Question. Well, but that becomes a very complicated question yes, on <laughs> what is magic, because magic is science. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, by that definition, um, magic is, you know, all forms of science, basically. It's a. Uh, you know, you, you, you've got your chemistry, you've got your biology, you have your psychology, mm -hmm. you have your sociology, you have your, your anthropology with the uh, cultural changes that come from that on large groups of people and, and how cultural identity becomes a thing. Magic is, is a very broad spectrum term for science. Okay. Well, if you want me to give you the simple answer, that's what I would say. How can magic be a type of science if so, the outcome oh, of it is completely unpredictable? So, so let me, uh, since since Dingo gave his answer, and I know the the, the question was positioned or, or posed to, to the both of us, do you mind if I, because I feel like the, the follow up to what Dingo said leads to another question, which why you already started into, do you mind if I give my answer as well, and then sure. kind of go from there? I was asking about you. So yeah, right. So <clears throat> magic, to me can can incorporate a lot of different things to the extent that if I go into the kitchen, and I collect herbs and I collect ingredients and I boil water and I uh, combine ingredients together to make a delicious meal. That's magic. If I combine in other ingredients, oils and, 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 and herbs and things like that, and I create a, a, a wonderful smelling 
soap or or balm of sorts that's that's magic in itself if i write poetry that that touches someone through reading or through speaking that they are emotionally jarred they are they're 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 inspired they 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 think of certain things in a different way or they're inspired to think of things in a certain way that's magic in and of itself as well there there's there's parts of magic in all of those things which touches a bit on what dingo was asking you about in terms of like the 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 under like what do you think magic is like there's magic in all of it we don't know what the outcome is going to be in the kitchen i don't know that I'm, if i combine rosemary thyme butter garlic and and onions that i'm going to make anything good <laughs> the idea the, the intent is to make something good for the purpose being that i want to and you know uh provide a delicious tasting meal from, for my guests, right? I could burn the garlic, I could burn the, the sage or the rosemary or whatever it is that I'm cooking. So there's, there's, there's that aspect to it. It's, it's very literal to me, right? It, it's not always mystical. It's not always esoterical either. It's, it's mm -hmm. literal. It's so much about the um, physical the, or the profane maybe even is, is another way to say uh, incorporates elements of magic well that's the only way we can experience it is through the profane through those through senses the, um, through those tangible the, senses mental sight. State. Yeah. right yeah <clears throat> so that is my answer why what was your follow up to that <laughs> <laughs> well to answer the question at hand which is is magic a science or art and also how does it work <laughs> since we're still on to that Patricia to ask the question of whether or not magic actually causes anything is it a cause is it a causational thing well to that i'd have to answer have you ever heard of the block time theory the what the block time theory block time theory yeah it it relates to time i mean you know elaborate regardless for the listeners <laughs> all right the, the block time theory is essentially an idea that the universe can, is contained in a box, which is the only part which I don't necessarily believe in. But it, it's the idea that everything is overlapping everything at the same time. Like there is no past, present, or future. It's all happening simultaneously. And that's the same with everything physical and, you know, just dimensional. Right. So how can cause and effect exist if it's just a single snap and then it's done? It, am, am I catching? I mean, that right? depends on if you follow that way of thought process. Oh yeah, that's another thing is it's, it's just continuing you know? overlapping each other infinitely. If something doesn't have a start nor an end, then how can it be causational or effectual? Because when you put fire to water, it boils. Yes, mm -hmm. but fire and water isn't necessarily the thing that we're talking about. Th think of it like... But it is. It all goes down to that because that is magic as well. Chemistry, the early forms of magic, if you study the early forms of what was referred to as magic, <clears throat> it was a lot of herbalism. It was a lot of uh, shamanism, uh, culinary practices. Um, the rituals were very basic, and um, yeah, it required elements relating that to life. Profane. You know, like you, you, that, and that's whether you're talking about if you want to go into like the technical terms of magic, of like green magic or black magic or white magic or whatever. You know, like chemistry and it, uh, chemistry comes from alchemy right and you know let's not forget like at one point in time the whole definition that that magic at, at least at one point in time in in our human history right if a woman could read and write she was a witch and she was practicing magic and she was right. uh, you know what i mean like, magic so, is, like... a, is a is a modern <laughs> term magic is a modern term and it's it's kind of a dirty word i don't really like it that much because magic just used to be like existing mm -hmm. uh, well okay think of it like this 
science is a measurement tool in the best way it can be described. An art form is the process of creating something or the process of understanding something through creation. Don't you think that art would relate more to magic than science, assuming it's completely unpredictable and most of the time you're the one that's coming up with the method and ideas of it? Not necessarily. I mean, you have to look at, for example, um, math metal, where bands go into a studio with a formula hmm. and then they write the song after that formula. Yes. Well, I mean, or, or from a chemistry perspective, uh, cooking is one that I, I love to go to, you know, like because water is going to boil at that point. Well, I mean, but you don't necessarily know the exact molecular structure of the pasta that you're about to toss in that water. Therefore, it becomes an art to... form. Right. And you have to go by field rather than science because you don't have scientific research into that pasta you just rolled out yourself well i mean some people usually apply a type of formula to their rituals for for example i think the most common method is to uh you know draw the circle call the quarters etc the wiccan method um but a crucial part of understanding that is that those methods don't necessarily, they aren't the thing that matters. The point is that you're into that state of mind. The, those see. methods can exist and they can help, but they aren't actually necessarily that important to it. They can be done any other way. I would agree. Yeah. I, I haven't, yeah. Uh, I haven't done that and used that method in over a and decade. And that is what makes magic an art. Ah. <laughs> because it isn't... So it's free form, right? Are we talking like less of the calculated approach? It's, it's, I don't know if I'm jumping ahead of it, but... <laughs> I don't know. You're, you're on point. It, it's pure chaos. Like you're just given materials and you throw things together until something works. I mean... It, the thing yes and no. I mean, <laughs> yes and no, right? Yes and yeah, no. Because you can go into it with the structure, with the order, with the like the the the, the stop point, or start point, middle point, and end point. You can go into it in that sort of mindset, but there's other aspects of it that take over that are outside of your profane understanding of space and time that you exist in and around. And depending on the approach that you take into magical practices. And we may be getting into more of like the, uh, the, the, not the profane, not the mundane type stuff, the more like psychedelic maybe even, or more of the um, mm -hmm. real woo-woo type stuff where you're outside of your own existence. You're outside of your own perception of existence and you are experiencing things around you that are true and real as it is for the, the, the unseen, the things that we can't tangibly feel in our day-to-day -day lives because we're just not connected to that aspect of, of existence anymore on a day-to-day -day basis. I, I have there. an interesting example for this. Um, a good friend of mine, Daniel, uh, I've known him since I was five. So I've known him for over 30 years by this point. And damn you old. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't old yet. <laughs> Look who's talking over here. Yeah. Uh, make so you like they've wasted his a uh, <laughs> him and his dad were uh, building a shed, right? And my buddy Daniel is uh, you know, like he studied calculus and trig and all that. He's a computer programmer. He he took high level math courses and all of this, made his own programs in his TI 83, you know, like. And before he could input the functions of the measurements needed to build said structure, his dad had the exact calculation. And he was like, well, you know, hang on, just like, let me, oh, damn, you're right. Wow. 
okay. Sorry, old man. <laughs> Art can be as accurate. Mm -hmm. That free form can be just as accurate. It's just a different language. It's very similar to me in music would be another example I could use that I can't read sheet music worth a crap. I can't sight read. I can, but I'm like, I'm like a five-year-old. Like I'm like F C <laughs> like I'm really slow at it, but if I hear it, it's I got it. Yeah. <laughs> wow. That's an interesting skill to have. I want to talk. So to just what, what's the, that's that's where magic is the bridge between science and art, between the abstract and the concrete. Jesse, you were going to say something? Oh, I just since we were talking about music before before we started the podcast, I, Dingo and I were um, absorbing something recently. And I mentioned this in the intro about Midgard Musings having a theme and having music written for Midgard Musings. And Dingo's privy to it and knows about it to its raw form. And that, <laughs> that thing right there, man, has been a, 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 a project that started off as one thing. And then I was asked about feedback and there was, hey, can you do this? Can you do that? And then the, the person working on it comes back and says, here's what I've got. And here's also some things that I added that you perhaps didn't mention. And I'm, and I'm, and I'm using like very like basic terms. It was, it, 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 it seems methodical, but the organic uh, approach to it was very, um, I don't know, man, it was almost like vines growing up a tree. It's like, Oh, we're, we're, we're going this way. And then we're going to go this way because this is just the way things are going to go. And then, and then there's an element that adds to that, life point of 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 the growth and then we're going to go this way with it and we're going to go down maybe and we're going to go out and we're going to go up and we're going to go in and we're going to go sideways and and you know it's raining sideways and and but it's, and it's all not of it. quite that though because it still follows a pattern it is a, there's a pattern to it but there's fibonacci it's sequence is the only yes. thing that i can think of it's fibonacci yeah. sequence where it yeah it just builds upon itself Right. Yeah. In a cyclical manner in it's, the most perfect organic way. It's not chaotic in the sense that there's no semblance of order. It's just there's there's a difference, I believe, with chaotic uh, the existence. It appears of chaos. to be, but it's not right. There, there's an organic order to it with that. We that we in our in our profane understanding of space and time can't apply. It's like you can't for something to do something it's going to do what it's going to do but you can kind of train it or nurture it to be what it's going to be in its way and that's the yeah. way the music's the way this song the way this musical piece has grown that's I, pretty amazing i'll have to check that music out whatever you talk about oh yeah you're gonna hear it you're gonna hear oh, it you're, yeah, gonna, see you're it. gonna hear it <laughs> Where everybody's gonna hear it everybody's gonna hear it and it's gonna see it. and it's cool that the conversation segue to that part of things because it it seems to fit this part music of the conversation at least analogy i think for magic and and that it it grows you know like there's there's songs that i've written that have taken years to finish because it had to have those specific layers and there doesn't seem to be a method to the madness but there is <laughs> yeah interesting okay where, where were we? We were talking about formulas, right? <laughs> um, <laughs> the theme of the podcast. Yeah. Where the hell were we? <laughs> <laughs> that is the theme of the podcast. Where the hell were we? <laughs> when it comes to magic, ritual specifically, the thing that I think separates it from science is that it doesn't need that one same exact formula to work, even for other people. Like you can create your entirely own approach to it. It isn't just two substances together create a reaction. You can do that with literally everything. And that's what makes it more of an art form because you can piece it together on yourself. It isn't a thing that requires a process in order to get there. Yeah, I, I mean, in a sense, but think of it like, if you're talking about like having one thing for everybody or whatever, like what if you're allergic to said medication? Mm -hmm. 
that's not going to work for that person. And so it has to evolve into, you have to change your yeah. flow well, of energy, so to speak, you know? Yeah. But <laughs> the thing about that medication is it to somebody else, it doesn't even have to resemble the, um, the chemical compound in the original one. It can literally just be, it can be an entirely different substance if they wanted it to be. Yeah, but there's a science behind that that right. dictates how that reaction occurs. Oh. But everybody's brain chemistry and body chemistry is different, so you have to adapt. It's, I mean, it, Dingo, it's, an, you ever, know. it's an ever flowing process. Science is an ever flowing process. Right. Like science 50 years ago doesn't even come close to resembling science today, especially if you're talking about, for example, psychological care. Yeah. Well, science 15 Medical science, or 50 years ago, even 15, 20 years ago, uh, psychology science could be viewed as barbaric by yeah. today's standards. It, it, it has to evolve because things change. Well, yes, but nothing and so really science isn't so concrete. Well, yes, but nothing in magic is actually really evolving. It's just changing. <laughs> it's just becoming. It is evolving. Yeah. That, when you that, do that's it right, thing. it is. The, 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 the change is that that's evolution, man. Like that's change is, is inevitable. It's, it's well, evolution is change. It's the thing that was is not. What is evolving other than picking up a different set of material to work with? It's adapting to the circumstances around you. It's well, yeah, it's not so much picking up different materials. It's, it's adapting to circumstance. Well, that wouldn't be advancing as a thing. That would just be adapting to a new form. It may not be in advance, but it's adapting but everything to the is, circumstance. Everything is advancing. I mean, we had a tornado here a couple of nights ago in Tennessee. And when I was a kid, that was unheard of. We had snow on the ground in the 80s you know like here in december and we have tornadoes now like nature is changing nature is evolving nature yeah. is adapting and we have to roll with those changes or we will not survive hmm. and i wonder too if a lot of the shit that we've experienced excuse the language that we've come to experience in our day and time with weather and and nature and things like that have a large, uh, the, the result of which is largely due to us as a species, us as humankind. People are at large trash and people do not <laughs> respect and, 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 and live symbiotically with the world that they are privileged to be a part of. They just don't at large. You know, hey, you, mean, know, and you know, Ken and I watch Midsummer Friday night. Don't piss on the ancestral tree. <laughs> right. Bad things will happen. <laughs> right. Well, I disagree with that exact. Uh, I disagree with that exact um, example, but I, I get Which what you handled this. Don't piss on the ancestral tree. Yeah. I'm, I'm not really big with ancestors. Oh, well, let's talk about it. Yeah, yeah. Why, let's let's why go not? there. Let's go what's, there. What, what's up? No, no, no hate, no judgment. Let's just talk about it, because we could learn some things. Maybe you, maybe you can teach us some things, and we can all learn from each other. Why not? Mm, okay. <laughs> <laughs> this this completely off shot from where I thought this would go, but that's fine. I know, right? <laughs> Random heathen ramblings. Welcome to the show, everybody. <laughs> it's Playhouse. <laughs> the word of the day is ancestors. <laughs> <laughs> so, I don't really value ancestors very much. And the reason for that is because I believe that their continuation of the ancestral tree is sort of a selfish act in every way of the word because i mean think of i mean you're putting this being into another into a world where it exists and it can feel and it can think and it's what's the word i'm looking for it it's vulnerable to suffering there we go 
it's vulnerable to um, all these horrible things that can possibly happen to it. And the worst part is that most of it is horrible, <laughs> especially in the ancient times with the ancestors that we're talking about, because, you know, there was a lot of famine. They were um, sort of unadvanced, really. And you, you put this being in this world to suffer for about 70 years and then to do the same to their children. Also, you can have a purpose and also you can consin- uh, continue the line of suffering. Doesn't that seem selfish to you? That's why I'm probably never going to have children. Well, that's I mean, a fair. Know, uh, what that says to me is kill all humans. I mean, well, right. Human, like, again, so... <laughs> Like, uh, so and that's fine. So Wyatt and and Dingo and me, right? We would not be here talking about these things, educating ourselves, learning about our respective respective existences, and and looking to benefit our own individual existences and, and sharing our thoughts with the world because that's what we're doing. We would not be able to do this if it were not for our ancestors. I'm talking about our parents and our grandparents and those who did the thing that got us here. We had no choice or say in that, but here we are. Well, what I was mean, the motive? What was the, what, was the, what was the purpose behind that? What was the motive behind that? There's love. There's purpose behind it, whether it was to create. That. Yeah. yeah, whether it was to create and preserve <clears throat> uh, a family line or whether it was to have that that family unit i mean there's it's not all bad granted a lot of it does suck like you know we're here now and, and we're dealing with a lot of crap as as human beings like the world just it is it's 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 a, it's a pretty crappy situation let's be honest like it is but there's also positive things to to be taken from it so to not take stock or to not give stock into our ancestors I feel is a bit of a disservice to them because, hey, you know, what they did and how they did it, it was it was survival. It was a preservation of of, of family lines. It, it was probably a lot of other things that that may not just touch on the the surface level of like, I want to just, you know, get busy with somebody and have a good time. And oops, there's a kid. <laughs> I mean, there, there is that. I mean, that, that stuff like that happens and we're getting yeah. into some pretty heavy duty things uh, on, on that line of, 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 of thought or that. Track. We in the South, brother, that, that happens a lot around here. <laughs> I mean, you know, what else is there to do? They don't, except... have, they don't have kids. They have litters. <laughs> Another right. thing is we aren't only just thrown in and induced to basically an entire lifetime of suffering and then encouraging our children to do the same. But also we're thrown in with zero context. (laughs) The universe doesn't care about what we know. It just wants us to survive. And that's something that I don't really value a lot. But that's where we is that that way, though, you know, right. Animals, plants, I mean, everything is thrown into that. Everything lives that way. (laughs) Yep. We're just part of that cycle. We're, man, we're, 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 we're pawns in the game and we're, we're, we're small players in the larger scheme of things, you know? So what do we do coming from someone who's a three-year-old daughter at the time, three years old, looked at him with big tears in her eyes and said, daddy life's hard sometimes. And I don't think I'm strong enough to deal with it. (laughs) She's three, (laughs) you know, like she gets it already. And yeah, it's sad, man. But like, that's, that's life. Dingo and I were at a, uh, a, a, uh, we were at a funeral of a near dear friend and brother to both of us. And um, without naming names and without being specific, I won't do that. But we were there and that individual's son, who's I think maybe eight or something. I mean, he's young. Uh, eight or nine. I can't remember which it, it was. But yeah. yeah. I mean, young man goes and just blurts out. I'm having a mental breakdown. Mm. and just says i'm having a mental breakdown leave and me I, alone and, and i stopped yeah and i stopped i think we both did dingo you and i were both sitting there we both yeah. i looked at him i'm like man kid you know just wait without knowing the full context of why he said what he said but understanding later on some of the things going on um 
in his life or whatever. It's like, again, the age, the number, the, the perception of our existence in certain in terms of time, right? This kid just expressed himself in a way that was like, man, that's profound. Like I'm having a mental breakdown. I'm having a nervous breakdown. I'm having a breakdown over here. It was very adult. I it mean, was, yeah. it was, yeah, it, it was adult. It was <laughs> mature, I guess. I mean, I don't yeah. know, but like, it was so like, you look over and you go, man, you think you're having one now, just wait. But at the same time, it, it, gave pause to think about why why do you say something like that at that tender young age you know well that's when i had came to the sad but not really sad because there's more to it <laughs> but somewhat sad conclusion that existing in general is probably the cause of suffering because if you weren't to exist then there would be no separation between well anything so suffering nor pleasure would exist and you wouldn't even be there to experience what the thought of pleasure or pain would be like so it would be pure bliss so i told i had that thought um very close to your age that hit close to home man Hmm. i I know (laughs) so samsara it's samsara yes the wheel of suffering birth is pain life is pain death is pain it's all suffering Yes. But um, let's 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 look at it one other way too. What does suffering lead to? What does adversity lead to? It it breeds a thing if you allow it to. And this this goes into some very specific approaches to life and how we because again, nature is suffering. Nature experiences the very thing that we as humans as sim, as 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 conscious beings as in in a way to express it in words and all this that we're able to talk about like these are things that that are experienced in nature that they don't have the 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 verbal expression to Mm -hmm. to describe but it's still there it's still an inherent part of existence so the adversity the suffering can if we allow it and if we work it in such a way in ourselves as the beings that we are those things breeds worth it breeds things of of importance to our people and to our nearest and dearest so like if everything just sucked and we just didn't do anything about it then we we'd be we'd all be just some pretty miserable uh sacks of flesh walking around here existing right but we take some we take we take suffering and we in the best way that we can at least i hope um allow that to um temper us and 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 put us in a position to uh be more worth uh to to it to our peers and to the to, to those that we are nearest and dearest to around us you know uh, otherwise like you say we're just kind of just existing in in misery <laughs> until we well, expire find the things that make you suffer less well yeah what would worth be to you if you were to not exist worth Even is placed worth- what my, what my worth is, is not what I deem my worth to be. My worth is what other people tell me my worth is. Okay. I am worth nothing unless my people tell me I'm worth something. And that's where the relationship between our people ties in. We are not just trees. We are not just plants. We are not just animals. We are conscious beings that have connections to, to other conscious beings. And um, we, uh, <laughs> we, 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 we live or die by that. And, and our existence in between is, is going to be the quality of life is, is going to be determined based on the people that we're around, the people that we uh, tie that weird, those, those, those threads with. We're, we're all sort of interconnected in a way. Well, what would the quality of life be worth to you if you weren't living? <laughs> my point is that well if you're if you're not living then there is no quality there is no of quality of life i mean it's oxymoronic no life yeah well there's no non-quality of life either. how would a tree are you exist saying if you would... had never have existed or okay or let, let me preface are you saying had you never existed at all or are you saying if you were to cease to exist at this moment um to cease to exist entirely entirely 
from beginning to end. But also, um, then you, then well, nothing would nothingness would be all that you would know, as far as we know. Well, what is nothing? Because we don't you? know anything about non-existence. Because the only way that humans can experience, to our knowledge, is by existence. What is nothingness but everything put together? When, when you mix all of the colors in the, uh, in the spectrum that we can see, including the grayscale, what do you end up with? Nothingness is everything. They're the, they're, they're the exact same thing. Yes. My point with the color thing is when you mix all the and colors- And that's why I don't believe in death. I don't believe non-existence is possible without existence. They, they can't exist without one another. Therefore, if there, there is no non-existence because there has to be that existence parallel, that there has to be that balance. Otherwise, non-existent is, doesn't make sense. It, it has no function. It has nothing to balance off of. Well, that's what you think because you currently exist and you're limited to that rational sort of mind. <laughs> well, y'all are. Well, it's not, it's, it, well, it's not only that, but if, if you have nothingness, there has to be an existence. Otherwise, there is no nothingness. Well, There's nothing to, nothingness is a concept that we cannot conceive with our human brain. Mm -hmm. Because the only thing we have to compare it to is existence. Well, if you were non-existent, what would be the... What would be the difference between nothing and something? There would be, I mean, again, that's something that they, that no, I don't think any living sentient being can conceive because if non-existence were all, then nothing would exist at all. It would just be nothing. It would just be black. It would just be nothing, nothing. You, nothing, There's a, there, but, yeah. but things exist. Yeah, Nothing and there has there has to be that way they exist. They exist. There has to be and that. So the whole in, concept of nothingness is by the opposite of existence. Right, because every every piece of of lore that exists in multiple cultures describes existence coming from nothingness. Whether it's Norse in the Ganunga Gap, right? There was a void, there was blackness, and there was elements that, com that, that clash, that combine, that create, that, that, that started that whole creation myth, or whether it's uh, uh, Christian or, or Judeo-Christian uh, concepts of the creation theory, where it was, the earth was without form and void, and there were things that happened from the creator. The that, celestial that, void, which that right. covers Sumerian, like, Egyptian, Mayan, uh, uh, Indian, it, Hindu. Exactly. Not it all, all started it. from nothing. It all started from nothing. But for us to exist and for us to 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 have a, a, a an understanding of our existence, it, it started from nothing and it could not continue as nothing for life to exist, for for symbiont life to exist. Couldn't. There had to be a there had to be something. There had to be at least so. that speck. That speck of dust that was something in order for there to be nothing. Otherwise, there is truly nothing. Yeah. Well, my perception of it is that nothing does exist. I mean, for example, I'm going to use... So what are you? What am I? If An nothing exists, you're... what are you? An illusion that you're perceiving. <laughs> yeah. And that may very well be. Well, all of this could be an illusion. Me? We could all be in a simulation of a simulation of a simulation shout out rick and morty i mean i mean yeah, just yeah, like I was gonna say yeah i mean but you're perceiving me right so what am i then uh, are, are we are we all illusions to one another and if we are we're still experiencing it and so it doesn't matter if i mean 50 percent of uh astrophysicists and um quantum physicists agree that we are possibly in a computer simulation Regardless, that's our reality, and we exist within it, and therefore, we exist. Okay, I have an answer. I am you coming on to you in a different form. Right. 
but that still exists for, for the idea of the self if it was you're thought, you're, you're 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 starting to talk like uh tibetan book of the dead kind of stuff with, uh, <laughs> with that and, and and but regardless we still exist do you we're still experiencing this and so you got to deal with it you have to deal with that and unless you just give up then you have to deal with that existence regardless of what it is what what medium it is it doesn't matter it's the medium that we can perceive and understand if it was seen from a material perspective meaning the body and the self in the physical world it, it can't be the self because the self can't be found within it. You could say this is the kidney, these are the lungs, that's the heart, here's the brain, etc. But where is the self in any of that? You could say that the self is all those parts put together, but being separate or connected to anything are both illusions simultaneously. So yourself would be the concept of those things being connected. At that point, we leave materialism because concepts and thoughts are not material. So that would mean that the self is conceptual. Still no, because concepts do not exist. It only lives within our experience. Beyond that, it is only oblivion and therefore nothing. So we are our experiences? No, because our experiences don't exist and they're all illusions. So we are literally nothing perceiving nothing. We're just now, no, man, perceiving. If my, if my kidney fails, I'm going to have a bad time. But we you're are, still perceiving, you know. Um, and whoever wrote that um, sounds like they read a lot of Carl Jung. Yeah. You know. Um, I wrote that and that I yeah, never it sounds like you've read a lot of Carl Jung. I don't even know his name. <laughs> you should look into Carl Jung. I think you would like him a lot. Yeah. Mm. I thought the exact same thing. Um there's the self. When you're talking to self, the self, I don't perceive myself as existing. I don't view myself as a singular thing. Then what is your experience? I'm a father. I'm a brother. I'm a son. I'm a worker at my job. Um, so you I'm are a gothi. I, I'm, I'm, I'm a musician. I'm a composer. Um, I'm all of these things, but though none of those things are me. Mm -hmm. I'm all of those things put together. The, the, the me that you perceive me to be is totally different than the me that Jesse perceives me to be, or that my mom perceives me to be, or that my kid perceives to me, me to be. It's all the same person. It's all the same self, but those are all completely different ideas and entities so you are everybody else's thoughts of you of your yeah yeah that's what we all are yep i, I, what, I, I wouldn't i of. wouldn't go so far as to call it egregore but <laughs> we, we we are we are all connected into one thing and i think that's what humans have forgotten and gotten too driven on the ego yep. well, and the id <laughs> level of things uh we we are we are connected and we, we're we're more connected than we think we are yep. well what are those people and what are those thoughts of you other than just more illusions from different perspectives they say they see things as the same as you most of them no they don't no, they really don't well they still follow the standard philosophy <laughs> well, they, they function off of the same philosophy is what I'm trying to say. If Not exactly. No. They don't function in the same manner at all. Like I've known this guy. I've known, I've known Dingo for the probably I've known Dingo as friends and, and, and stuff for like the biggest part of like the last six, six ish or so years. All right. Just let's put things into the, to, to the, to the realm of, of things that we understand. Right the spatial time that we understand as, as humans of well, all that shit. So I've known him for like the last six years or whatever. I haven't really gotten to know him, know him until very recently because I was him and he was me and we were I and I were we, and there was a lot of things that, you know, um, 
took place very recently that 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 killed the individual perception <laughs> of <all>. ourselves <laughs> right cuckoo cuckoo mother ever right i mean just it's you know it, it and it sounds very i don't know it's it sounds very goofy in a way like when you talk about it like that but the experience of it all it was like man just individual experience individual understandings of of of, of the self is a perception of it all when you experience each other in a way that transcends that profane understanding of it all it goes into this type of stuff that you're talking about why but it, it you, you absorb it totally different and, and you experience it in a different way where it's like i don't even really matter myself none of this right here amounts to much of anything because it's just it's just what you get what you see is what you get and that's about it it's 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 surface level stuff the the way that that the world is connected the way that humans are connected the way that we're all connected goes way beyond anything that most people in the world can um describe or experience do you remember what i said from the live stream about the dream theory how everything is a dream and our minds are only limiting us to a certain point because if it didn't then everything would be chaos and therefore nothing well we yep. still are that nothing just we're nothing ordered in a specific way <laughs> so the reason why you and i are connected and you i and dingo are connected is because well there's no separation between nothing and nothing they're all connected because there's literally nothing else to connect <laughs> it's pure oblivion wow. It's subterranean no. is, is one of the ways that I like to put it. it it's, it's beneath the surface and, it, and it, it's, it's not even just beneath the surface. It's like so far, so far beneath that it's inside itself. I don't know. It's, it's, it's a very weird. <laughs> uh, Have you ever considered to... existence is something and we haven't figured it out yet, but we're all, we're still all floating in the void. Right. We're all just kind of struggle busting our way through existence. <laughs> you know, we <laughs> right. are just all floating in the void. Yeah. But this existence thing is weird and we're trying to figure it out still. <laughs> Jesse, there is no below the surface because what what happens when you dig all the way through a planet? Um, you get to an end of a podcast. I don't know. Um... Oh, you get to the other side <laughs> we aren't stopping. <laughs> no, I mean I <laughs> This is this is stuff that, like I say, we could go on for probably six, seven hours and have a a, a long, drawn out stuff uh, conversation about it. It's absolutely engaging, and I love this type of thing because it goes beyond just the, you know, what do you believe in? You know, what do you think happens when you die, or, or any of this other sort of like, how do you exist with people? Like, it's very important types of conversations to have. Unfortunately, we do have a somewhat of a time frame to keep within because we are people and people have things that they need to do and i have things that i need to do and we all have things that we need to do <laughs> but like right. we 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 could we could literally probably could just go on and on i know with this particular crowd and our and I, I i vote um, we could go I on for vote this. part two with patrick and alex sweet yeah. yeah i think that would be a great podcast so let's let's do a part <laughs> two of this We'll schedule it for season three. Oh, we'll wait. get we'll we'll get an awesome audience. We'll get you know all of the you know we'll get you Dingo. We'll get Patrick. We'll get Alex, and we'll just uh, go down into the uh, proverbial rabbit hole, dig into the core, go into the sub subterranean levels of of things, and 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 explore it all. Let's get into it. You know, there's still one pretty important thing that I wanted to mention today. That, okay. Um, involves magic if you would allow me to sure um, let's go ahead have, have you ever watched those mandel brought zoom videos and mm -hmm. have you ever after a while thought that you were controlling it the zooming of the mandel brought like you feel like you're leading yourself into something intentionally well assuming there's no separation between you and the mandel brought with the mandel brought being the universe i think that's sort of how magic works we we are just going into the magic uh, the, the Mandel brought and given the illusion that we're controlling it. And therefore, not only does that get rid of the idea of cause and effect, but that also gets rid of the idea of actually manipulating anything. It's just, it, it isn't us 
it isn't us causing anything. It's us becoming aware of the next motion of the Mandel drop set. Mm. That's all I wanted to say. Yeah. yeah I mean, it, it's us becoming aware that we can, that we do see it. There we go. So how is it causational if it's just prediction? How is it a science in that case? <laughs> yeah. It depends on what form of magic you're referring to. Um, well, chaos magic specifically. But I'm using this as sort of a general blanket term for everything. Right. Because chaos magic is totally different than herbal magic. Yeah. But yeah, man, like that can, that's, that's, I, I mean, random heathen ramblings, ladies and gentlemen, if this is not the most randomest <laughs> thing <laughs> that you've experienced here on this podcast before for, for, you know, the yeah, year end of great. season two, then I, I challenge you to find anything more uh, intriguing and more mind stimulating than, than this out there. If you do uh, let me know, drop a comment, send an email. I don't know, just tweet it, add it, Midgard Musings, hashtag it, whatever the, the freaking social media things want you to do, but let us know. You um, won't be able to because I'm not going to give you my sources. <laughs> <laughs> there can only be one. Um, but I, uh, I, I do. I want to say thank you for, uh, for you guys uh, taking some time out of your night. Uh, I know, Wyatt, this has been a... a something you've been asking about for a while and i'm glad that we finally got time to do it there will be a part two of this trust me and then maybe there'll be a part three four five who knows we have a maybe a recurring segment on the podcast for season three we'll we'll see how it goes and uh get into some really you know mind-bending type stuff but um that'd, that'd be cool also shout out seth guire that uh, seth guy he do you remember him he was one of my friends he'd probably be freaking out over this whole thing <laughs> if he's out here on uh youtube or wherever and uh you know we can share that to him or out there yeah but shout out to seth guire uh yeah. thanks to you know to wyatt here so um but for everybody that's listening watching this about this is going to wrap up the podcast um you you guys can hang out for just a second before i wrap things up but yeah everybody listening watching be sure to check the description or show notes of the podcast for wyatt's channel and and stuff and see what is going on in his young mind and um engage him a little bit you know check out some of his stuff ask some questions comment whatever subscribe to his channel and uh yeah, look it's forward a good to time part two. trust me it's a good time i encourage yeah. you to challenge my work because then i would be able to build off of your questions <laughs> that's good to hear that's good to hear so you heard it from the man himself you know challenge him give him some things to think about give him some points to study on give him some things to to digest and, and mull over so um, you, until uh, do you guys mind if we stick around after a while just to ask a rather personal question to dingo yeah yeah yeah. hang out sure. for a second because we're going to wrap the podcast up but i'm not going to shut things down for 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 you and i and and he so uh right, but for right. everybody listening watching today you guys are all awesome thank you so much for a wonderful season two of the random heathen ramblings podcast stay yeah. tuned for more stuff about the uh updates on the channel there will be a uh sort of a state of the channel address uh, probably within a week's time of this podcast airing. Uh, so you guys stay tuned for that on the Midgard Musings YouTube channel. So be sure to subscribe there and update your notification settings to be notified when that comes out. And until we all talk again, stay safe, stay healthy, stay well. Have a great rest of the year. May your hearth fires all continue to burn bright. And we'll yeah. see you all in the next episode. Thank you all for watching. And thank you, Josie, for letting me on. Cheers. Yeah. Hey, it's been fun.